Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dr. Hollowed. In today's episode, we're diving into some of the weirdest and creepiest unexplained encounters ever reported. If you're fascinated by the mysterious and unexplainable, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more intriguing content. Enjoy the video. I have been wanting to tell this story, but I haven't gotten around to it. Back in around 2009, my friends had just bought a new car, and we were out test driving it. I was 19. There were four of us in the car, driving some back roads, and then we came up to a pretty major road that was right by our high school. We turned onto the road, and there was a white windowless work van that had the back doors open, parked on the side of the road, with a bright blue, glowing crystal looking thing. It was about two feet in diameter and was literally brightly glowing blue. We drove past, and the van had a single dim LED light strip on the top of the roof that was lit up with a blue line. We kind of didn't think much of it, but we drove down the road, and there was another car, a Dodge Intrepid, sitting with his lights off on the side of the road and the same blue LED light on the roof. To this day, I have no idea what the glowing, jagged looking orb was that was in the back of the van. My friends and I still talk about it and have no idea what it could have been. Workshop, late evening, England. Why am I at work late in the evening when almost everyone else has gone home? Because I'm stupid and need money. I was running a small CNC mill just to keep an urgent job in production. It's midsummer, so it's sort of getting darker now, but still light outside. Kinda dusky slash almost twilight. Purple sky, etc. Anyway, the radio is on, and I'm jamming out a little bit because I'm basically alone, occasionally taking a part out and putting a new one in, when I hear a call of my name and a giggle from behind me. I turn around because it sounds like one of my friends. Nobody. So I walk down to the workshop door, which was open, one of these big electric doors, 15 meters long and 20 meters tall, to let some heat out, and look around, still nobody. I put it down to a weird coincidence of the radio playing as someone called another employee's name, went back to my machine, and started the cycle again. Then I hear it again, louder, from the opposite direction, followed by more giggling. I look around and check the door again. There is absolutely nobody with that voice who knows my name. This repeats for about four hours, constantly changing position, tone, and pitch, but always very reminiscent of one of my friends from school. After four hours, the voice gets aggressive and sounds like it's ordering me rather than trying to get my attention, so I look around, and, shocker, there's still nothing. I never heard the voices again, though sometimes I swear I hear my name being called out from far away, somewhere behind me. As a teenage boy, I tried to keep a journal a few times. I never wrote more than a couple days before losing interest. One day, I woke up with an awful feeling. A feeling I'd never felt before. I was convinced that something awful would happen that day. I couldn't shake the feeling all day. However, it turned out to be a pretty normal, uneventful day. Despite that, the feeling still hadn't gone away by the time I was getting ready for bed. I figured I was just being paranoid at this point but I decided to write some valuable thoughts and feelings down in a notebook and leave it open on my desk, just in case I didn't wake up. The next morning came, and I felt better. I quickly forgot about that feeling. A few years later, I found that journal entry. It was dated October 9, 2000. That date is only significant to me because, one year later, my sister died of cancer. She wasn't sick in October of 2000, so I had no reason to think anything bad would happen to her, myself, or anyone else except for how I felt that day. It still weirds me out that I knew October 9th would be an awful day. I was just off by a year. As a kid, I was always was fascinated by trails and secret looking roads. It may have come partly from loving racing games that had cool little secret shortcuts. Anyway, obviously, we never took any because I wasn't the one driving. The first year I had my license, I had taken a number of weird roads I had never been down. Wooded Hills of Pennsylvania. There are so many cool little secret spots. One night, though, I decided to try to get lost and creep myself out. I love semi-scary situations for some reason. So it was sometime right before winter, maybe November, and it was really cold, windy, and eerie, and I thought it was the perfect time. It took turn after turn until I got onto one tight, windy road that I was disappointed was probably just going to be someone's driveway. Well, it was. As I was looking for a spot to turn around, I saw through the window of their house the very pale face of a child looking at me. Then I died. Just kidding. No, so I am kind of like slowly doing a five point turn and watching this weird looking kid, and then two adults, one male and one female, I believe, 
with long bleach blonde or white hair and extremely pale skin and effing crazy looking eyes, walk out onto the porch and just silently stare as I try to get the F out of there. Then I got the F out of there. I mentioned it to some friends, and they told me another friend of mine had a similar experience, but during the daytime, they had shotguns. But he could clearly see it was a family of albinos super tucked away in the woods. I have never seen these people in town, nor has anyone else. Absolutely astonishingly weird. I actually somehow totally forgot about this until someone else's post about weird Amish happenings. I used to live five blocks away from high school and would walk to and from school every day. I lived in a middle class neighborhood, so it was rare that I would see strange people. One afternoon, walking home from school, I realized I forgot my instrument at school and ran back for it. My friends kept walking home while I ran back to the school. I got my instrument and was running to return it to my friends. I was one block away from them when I was stopped by this kid, who was a little older than me. He was someone I had never seen before, but he wanted to talk. I noticed he had this white foam around his mouth, and his eyes were glazed. Now that I'm older and I think about it, he was probably on some sort of drug. Anyway, he proceeded to tell me things like I could f can kill you if I wanted to. If I had my knife, you'd be done, and other really nasty things. Then, all of a sudden, he left. I returned to my friends. I have never had an experience like that since. No one in my neighborhood has seen anyone like that again. It was definitely weird and creepy. Two instances spring to mind. Important context, my house has two parts, the main house and an extension that was built onto it after the main house was completed. This extension is a large room that has always been used as a sort of rec room. It is probably one third dash one quarter the size of the main house. It does not have any doors that lead to the main house, only a big one meter by two meter sliding window, which connects to the computer room. When I was a kid, I remember sitting on the computer playing a game and hearing a noise. I turn around, and through the window, I see a whitish thing silhouetted against the darkness. It slowly moves past the window. My mind accepted it and said grandma. So after I was done playing, I went for dinner. I told my parents that I saw grandma. They looked at me and said that Nan, my dad's grandma, was still at home. Me looking at mom, no, not nanny, grandma. Your mom, mom. She died when I was two years old. Driving home from work one night. All the roads were empty, and it was like 4a.m. still dark. I'm taking the right turn. As I'm turning, I see a young girl flash in front of my eyes. She started out in front of me, got closer, and disappeared. Only she didn't. It took me a long moment to realize there wasn't anyone there, and I hadn't actually seen her with my eyes. It's really hard to describe how I saw her without seeing her. Even back then, my mind was always under solid control. I'm not one for flights of fancy, I don't imagine things that aren't there. Hell when someone says, don't think about purple elephants. I don't. Yet somehow my brain had the image of a translucent young girl superimposed over the information that my eyes were transmitting to my brain. Around 01, my parents separated. My younger brother and I went to live in Florida with my father at my grandmother's house. She had just recently passed, and we were looking over the house until it sold. In the year we were there, there were strange occurrences on a near daily basis. Everything from cold spots to seeing black shadows out of peripherals to things moving on their own, and those were just to begin with. After a couple months, things got even stranger. I had just worked a night shift and had come home to get some sleep. A couple minutes after laying down, I hear a lot of noise coming from the kitchen. I come out and see every drawer and cabinet open. I was home alone at the time, and the front and back doors were locked. Another time, the guitar in my room played a couple of notes on its own. Half asleep, I look up, thinking it's just my imagination, but I see the string still vibrating as if someone had just plucked a note. The last straw was hearing my name said right into my ear after I had just laid down. That one made me nope out real quick, and I literally ran out of the house half naked. These all happened while I was alone in the house, but my father and brother both had their own experiences as well. Dad had told me he had very vivid reoccurring dreams of his mother, my grandma, where she was trying to tell him something that he could never understand, and her eyes were completely white. I've never seen my father so frightened in my life. We decided to adopt a couple cats to possibly lighten the mood in the house. Both would go towards the corner of the living room constantly, and his would swat at nothing but air. There was always a feeling of what I can only describe as evil. Maybe some of it was my grandma coming back to say hello, but something else was definitely in that place, and it felt like it really didn't want us there. I am an atheist through and through, but I have no doubt that there was something there that defies any earthly explanation that I can think of. 
I've never experienced anything like it before or after moving out of there. The thoughts of that place still give me goosebumps and make the hair on the back of my neck stand on end. When I was a child, I was frequently visited by shadow people at my home. It happened once at my uncle's house, and they told me it was me being a kid with a vivid imagination. One time my mom's youngest sister was staying with us and slept in the bed next to mine. The beds were separated by a nightstand. A shadow person appeared in the room and moved towards her in between the beds, arms reaching to me. It then bent forward so as to touch her in the face, and she freaked out, pulled the cover over her head, and began screaming, all while I'm wide awake, seeing this a foot away from me. My parents rush into the room and turn on the lights, and it's gone. I asked my mom a few weeks ago about her and was told she would not sleep at night after this for many years as she was traumatized. I've yet to speak to her about it, but I would love to in order to bring some closure. I feel somewhat responsible, as it was a normal occurrence for me. Maybe 12 years ago now, my younger brothers and I were sleeping over at my grandparents' house. They were sharing a bed in the guest room, and I was supposed to sleep on the couch. Well, since I had the place basically to myself, grandparents sleeping, brothers sleeping, dog sleeping, I stayed up on my laptop playing computer games until it was really, really late. You know, as you do. Come around 1 in the morning, I hear my youngest brother, probably 4 or 5 at the time, talking in the back room. I figured if I didn't tell him to shut up and go back to sleep, he'd wake up the other brother, and then I'd have to deal with both of them, so I got out of my chair and wandered down the hall in the dark. I stopped outside the door to listen, because if they were both awake already, it would have been better to let them talk each other back to sleep, but I could only hear the youngest one. It sounded like he was having a conversation, though, answering questions or something like that. I opened the door and stepped inside, and he was sitting up on the bed, totally fine, our brother dead to the world next to him. When he looked at me, I could tell he was totally alert. I was curious, so I went, who are you talking to? The man in the red shirt, he says to me. This is probably the part where I messed up. What man is in the red shirt? He lifted his chubby little hand, all blue-eyed innocence, and pointed. The one standing next to you. I noped the F out of that room faster than I've ever gotten out of somewhere in my life, after harshly demanding that he be quiet and go to sleep. The next day, I casually mentioned to my grandmother that I'd had a weird experience with my brother the night before. As I was telling her about it, she turned pale and told me to go next door and speak to our neighbor. Curious, I did as I was told, and my neighbor related to me the story of how she'd seen a man in a red flannel shirt working in my grandparents' garden a few evenings prior. She'd called out to him, thinking he might be a friend of my grandfather's, and he'd vanished. My grandmother always figured he was friendly, maybe the spirit of a guy who used to work the farmland that was once where her house stood, so we never antagonized the guy, and he never caused problems for us. Now, what did cause problems, for me, at least, was that the guest bedroom had been my great-grandmother's bedroom, and she died peacefully there in her bed after telling my grandmother that she could see her husband and she was running to meet him, cute, right? When I moved in with my grandparents, this became my bedroom because my sister refused to sleep in it. I wasn't worried, since I'd been close to my great-grandmother. At least, I wasn't worried until things started randomly happening. Stuff would suddenly fall off of shelves, my desk chair would get knocked over, there would be banging on the walls, the door would stick and then fly open, things like that. Only in this one room, and only when I did things my great-grandmother, in her life, would have disapproved of, like swearing or taking the Lord's name in vain. Eventually I stopped playing around and just learned to get along with her ghost or whatever was in that room, but for a while I considered getting my grandmother to call an exorcist or something. I just think it's interesting or odd that these events all happened in the same room and that the rest of the house was basically untouched by any weirdness at all. Figures. I work in La and have been to a number of deaths, bodies, and traumatic incidents that have shaped my life since, both good and bad, in some capacity. I think they tend to stick with you in some way, shape, or form and become part of your life even after your death, after not having met them, etc. One day I was in the shower, and I was thinking of some of the dead people who I have meet or come across over the years through work, car accidents, homicides, suicides, etc. Specifically, I was thinking about how nobody understands how the dead can pop up in your mind at the most random and routine times and how these incidents affect emergency workers. I was wondering if we do have some kind of connection with the dead people we meet, victims, Sudi, Sid's deaths, etc., even in the afterlife and how I will probably never know in this mortal earth. After my shower, I was in the bathroom brushing my teeth, still periodically reflecting on the dead people I have met over the course of my career, and I had the thought to pack my razor blade in an overnight bag to prepare for a work trip the following day. 
As I had that thought, within a second or two, my razor blade fell off the windowsill and onto the floor. I cannot find an explanation. There was no wind, no breeze, and no contact with the item. I'm not spiritual or religious, but I believe that it was one of the dead folk saying that they were still around in some capacity. My wife was a little freaked out about buying it, but I thought it was kind of reassuring. When I was younger, my grandparents lived down the street from my elementary school. I'm from a very small town where everyone knows my family due to our family business. I would walk home, usually with my younger brother or friends, every day from school to my Nana's. One day I was walking home, and my friend Sean decided to go home instead of to Nana's. So, we said our goodbyes, and I continued walking. How this street is set up, my family owns rental properties on each block, so there's always like a neighborhood lookout watching for them, if you will. Well, on this particular day, no one was really outside. Minding my own business, I get to the end of the street when a man in a hat stops me and says hello. Stranger danger, but he referred to me by name. I looked at him, and I couldn't place his face. I was completely frozen. He smiled at me and said, I know. It's been a long time, and I just wanted to see if you were alright. I'm like 10. I was completely confused and responded with okay, he laughed and replied, it's nice to know you haven't lost your humor, I said goodbye and walked away. He turned left towards the train station. What makes this weird is that I waited a minute and decided to follow him. He completely vanished. There was only one way he possibly could have gone, and when I looked into the building hall, I would have seen him. Even if he ran. It's a straight shot. He was just gone. I told my grandparents about it, and my grandmother told me I should write stories because I have an overactive imagination. Fuck death banshees, those horrifying freaks. I don't know why they do what they do. They're terrifying, but I've never heard of one hurting someone. I don't think I've seen one, but I've heard it. I call them death banshees because sometimes they scream, and the sound of their scream causes some physiological reaction in me that makes me panic and gives me an adrenaline rush. And someone I knew died when they screamed. The last time I experienced one was about two to three years ago. I woke up to hear a loud gasp and then that awful scream. It was really late, I think it was 3 AM it sounded like it was above the house but pretty close by. I had the impulse to send a message to my new friend in town to ask if she was okay, if her kids were okay, and stuff like that. I did end up texting her, are you okay? She had texted me back around 9 AM, saying, no, my little brother died last night. I've heard the death banshee scream several times in my life. Each time, someone I know died around the time of the scream. This is very recent, and it's been baffling to me. I live by a large field, and there's a long road a little off from the road exiting off of my neighborhood, and it leads to the highway. A while down there's a large curve, and in the midst of it there is a road turnoff that I've never, in all my 19 years of living here, considered exploring. I was on my way to the store one morning, and I had the sudden thought to go down it to see where it led. It's a burnt out looking road, nobody ever goes down it. Anyway, it's lined with lots of tall grass, it's shrouded in tall trees, and it looks kind of messy overall. There was a car ahead of me that I encountered after about 200 feet, and it was easily going 5 miles an hour at most. Barely moving. Even with me behind it, it didn't speed up. Eventually I just did a U-turn and headed out, since I was feeling really weird about the situation. There was nothing down this road, it was literally barren and seemingly useless. Another day, on my way home from class, I decided to check it out a second time. I got all the way down the road and saw a barn around a bend at the end along a heavily wooded area, and my curiosity was satisfied from seeing the entirety of the road. So upon doing another U-turn and heading back, a car slowly trailed behind me, coming from the small farm. Once I got back to the main road and the person behind me had seen me take off, they turned right back around and trailed very slowly back towards the barn. Different car. I don't know what's going on there but it's effing weird and suspicious to me, and I've been plagued by it since. It happened to my wife just yesterday morning. I leave work at about 5 AM and take the dogs out to do their business before I leave. We live in a large apartment complex. She called me about 5 minutes after leaving, freaked out, but at the same time whispering. She told me someone was knocking on our bedroom door. I told her she's hearing things, but she explained to me that our little puppy is barking at the door. This little dog goes berserk when there is someone at the front door, and she's acting the same way right now. A lot of things are going through my mind. I know when I took the dogs out, I didn't lock the door behind me, and I used the back entrance to leave that leads straight outside. I guess anyone could have just walked in as soon as I turned the corner. I quickly go home. Luckily, we have a security system. 24-7 video recording, 
and the cameras also take pictures whenever motion is detected. There are also door contacts on all the doors. I know what time each door has been opened. I get home, and all the doors are locked, so if someone was inside, they are still in there. We search everywhere and find nothing. I checked the security system and found nothing. There was nothing on the cameras, and the doors were only open when I took the dogs out and left for work. I wouldn't believe it. I would just think she was having a really vivid dream, but it's the way the puppy reacted that I can't explain. In my last year of primary school, I was in my after-school club playing hide and seek in our 6th grade classroom. As it got later, the caretaker told us to leave so we could lock up. We left and sat adjacent to this classroom in the library, which is basically just a table and chairs outside the door to the classroom. The caretaker went through the other 6th grade classroom door, making a loop around the school as the school was basically a square connecting all the classrooms, locking each door behind him as he went. Talking away, there was a natural silence, and we heard the handle of the 6th grade classroom, as if someone were trying to open it very aggressively, although it had just been locked. We all smiled at each other, thinking Mr. Dan's, the caretaker, was joking around, so a friend went to the glass of the door, peering into the darkness, and then the handle stopped moving. The friend ran off screaming, to scare us all, I assume. We laughed and carried on talking. However, a few minutes later, it started again, and we all got creeped out and started walking quickly to the hall doors, which were to the right of the chairs and tables, while this classroom was to the left. Assuming it was Mr. Dan's, we walk into the hall, and who do we see on the opposite side of the hall just finishing his loop of locking doors? Mr. Dan's. There is no way he would have made it to the other side of the school at that time. I still don't know what moved that handle. During spring break this year, a buddy of mine invites me to smoke. I agree, we smoke, but like a lot. Like so much. I'm incredibly high, and this is where it got weird, like really weird. A bit of a backstory, we're smoking on train tracks, dead of night. He then says, go get water from the car. I agreed and started walking back, and then it happened. It was identical to a nightmare I had as a kid. I mean, dead on. I was walking on the train tracks like in my dream, and it was dark out. I start running because I'm freaking out now. In my head, I keep repeating this has happened before over and over again. I come out to where the cars are parked, and between the parking lots are bushes. In my dream, it always hurt my legs walking through, and sure enough, it did when I walked through Inral. It's at this point that I begin to go insane. My first thought was that I had died, and this was hell. I get to his car, grab the water, and think to myself, I need help. I walk away from the car and up the small hill that leads to an intersection where a fire station is. I start walking, and on command, I put the water bottle in my right hand, just like in the dream. I lose it and start bawling my eyes out, because it is just like my nightmare. I panic and run back to the car and start yelling his name, Ryan, over and over again. Note that it is about 11 pm in a suburb, but no one heard me but him. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, but no one hears me. Then, as I walk back, he starts yelling my name, but the sound cuts off at the end of my name. Like, the sound just stopped at the end of my name. I meet up with him, and he asks if I'm fine. I tell him everything, he says I'm crazy, and we drive to a friend, where I calm down. So, my mom's house is haunted. We knew this from the day we moved in, so I'll share with you two of the creepiest stories I have from when I lived with her. 1. Sometime shortly after we moved in, my sister and I shared a bedroom. One night, we went to sleep with our lamp on since we didn't feel comfortable in our room just yet. We were both asleep when I suddenly felt someone sit at the bottom of my bed. I told my sister to get off and kick, but I didn't kick anything but air. I opened my eyes, saw my sister directly across from me sleeping, and that's when I saw it, my bed had an indention right where I felt someone sit on it. I tried to wake my sister up, but when I went to shake her awake, it disappeared. We were known for playing pranks on each other as we were growing up, so naturally, I thought she was messing with me. After that, I'd often see a black figure hovering at the end of my bed or near the closet. 2. My mom has a pull-string Pee Wee Herman doll, and it's probably the creepiest doll I've ever seen. We had a storage unit that we kept our miscellaneous stuff in, the crap we wanted to keep, but it took up too much space. All day, we were running back and forth between the unit and our house. When we got home, I decided to take a shower since I felt pretty dirty. I go into my closet, and there sits that creepy AF doll. Suddenly, I heard it do his signature laugh. The batteries had been depleted for several years, so there's no way it could have been accidentally set off, also because of the pull string, it was difficult to pull anyway. I went and asked my mom if she'd go get her doll out of my closet, 
and she told me it was in storage and I was hallucinating. Mom promptly sends in Daddio to retrieve the evil doll. I actually had a conversation with my mom about this not too long ago. I was a teenager, and I swear up and down that house has some sort of paranormal being living there. She never believed me. Mom just told me she knew the entire time but didn't want to creep me out. They have since turned the room into an office, and they hear me yell for them every once in a while. I haven't lived there in four years. Maybe this is not a very appropriate response. But still. One night a couple of years ago, my friend and I were returning home from another friend's house. It was dark and nobody was around, and suddenly we saw something I can only describe as a demon portal creeping along the ground. It was black and wavy and slowly deforming and pulsing, maybe 15 inches in diameter, looked maybe like a black surreal jellyfish, and was moving very slowly, hovering about half an inch above the ground. We both stopped and froze. It was about five yards away, moving towards us. In about five seconds, we both realized it was just a black plastic bag caught in some slow wind near the ground and didn't look like anything surreal at all. But we both saw it, and we both thought we were going to die there and then. My friend still mentions this quite often and says it's the most frightening thing he's ever seen. I guess, of course, it was all just our imagination, but out of all the times my imagination tricked me, this one stands out as something indeed supernatural. I'll bite. I have a few stories that happened to me, but this one came to mind first. I was working in a gas station a few years ago. This station was about 7 miles out of town, right off of a river that people often float down. My boss made me the closing guy, so I had to work from 5 to close, 1 or 2 a.m., depending on the closing chores. Around 1 a.m., I had to lock the store up. We only had one entrance, and it was at the front of the building. I approached the two doors, dead bolted them, and keyed them close. I then went into the cooler to restock, as it was first on my closing list. When I was in the cooler, a buzzer went off. This buzzer was placed to let us, the workers, know when somebody entered the building. I parted with some of the cooler items and looked through the display doors and saw nobody. I thought it was strange, but it kept working. A few minutes later, the buzzer chimes again. I walked out of the cooler to the front of the store and started talking. Hello? No response. I walked back into the cooler, and as soon as I opened the door, I heard bzzzzz 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 very quickly, one after another. I ran to the front doors and shook them vigorously to see if the store chime would sound. It did not. I didn't understand. My only logical guess was that there was a malfunction in our mechanism. I went back to the cooler, and as I'm about to open the door, the chime goes off one more time. I said, F it. And proceeded to do the rest of the chores. I decided to mop very quickly. However, before I mopped, I needed to sweep and clean the bathroom. After I got the bathroom mopped and cleaned, I decided to use it. Still pondering what happened with the buzzer, I take my glasses off and sit them on the bathroom sink while I sit on the toilet. My ritual every time I did this was to pull a paper towel out of the dispenser and lay it on top. I don't know why I did this, but literally every time I had to use the bathroom, I would do this. That night was no different. So I laid the paper towel over the waste basket and proceeded to rub my eyes until I started seeing spots. I paused for a moment and heard plastic moving. I immediately know that noise is associated with the plastic liner in the trash bag, and when I look down, my paper towel has been pushed to the bottom of the can. I felt queasy and finished very quickly. I still had to close, though. I grabbed the mop and drug it behind me, just enough to get the immediate dirt off the floor. I went up the first island and down the second. Up the third, and back down the fourth. When I reached the end of the aisle, I noticed an end cap display with toys on it was moving slightly. I shouted to calm my nerves, who are you? What is going on? And I heard the sound of footprints patter away. I waited for a brief moment and heard the feet once more on the next island coming back down. It sort of sounded like how a child runs. Anyway, I put the mop up and quickly went to just go count down the drawers. I was off my count by a tremendous amount that night. Something like $25 but I didn't care. I just wanted out of there. I set the alarm, turned all the lights off, and went to my car quickly. As I was leaving, I pulled around the front of the store. I felt guilty for not finishing my closing chores, but I was freaked the F out. As I scanned the store, I looked toward the back where the bathroom was and saw the bathroom light turn on. It stayed on for the night. The next day, I was called into my boss's office. I did get written up for not closing out properly. When he asked me to explain myself, I told him to watch the footage on the camera. I told him what had happened, and he chuckled a little bit and told me about how the store is haunted by a little boy. 
I guess a few summers ago, there was a family that was floating the river when their four-year-old fell over the edge of the boat and drowned. I don't remember if they found his body near where the station was or if that's where they lost him, but supposedly, it's the same boy that haunts that store. I grew up in a village in Norway. When I say village, I mean exactly that, the gas station also works as a bakery, post office, and grocery store. Surrounded by mountains and forests all around, it is the perfect place for horseback riding, and owning a horse, I did that a lot. Never had any issues, the horse just didn't like trailers and the bigger tractors. He was generally very calm but stubborn. But this one particular area kept freaking her out. You had a dirt road for maybe a couple hundred meters, which went through a small patch of forest and then another clearing with a couple of houses, then a small trail going up in the mountain. She would be fine on the dirt road until we got to the first trees, and from there, I had to force her to walk the 50 or so meters to the other side. As soon as we were out, she was fine. Going the other way, she would first not want to enter and then set off in a panicked run and refuse to stop until we were almost at the end of the road. The only unusual thing I have ever noticed there is that you never hear a single bird, and honestly, 15 plus years later, I still feel uncomfortable going through there. Bear with me, as this is a little long. I like to give details. FYI, I am skeptical by nature and always rationalize things, but this memory always feels off to me when I think of it, as I cannot produce an explanation. This happened about 6 or 7 years ago. I would have been 18 or 19, and I was living with my parents. To give some context, we lived in a 4 bedroom, raised house in a quiet suburb of a small city. My room, my younger brother's rooms, and my parents' rooms were all on one side of the house, facing out to the side of the yard between dad's shed and a concreted area, and beyond that was the neighbor's house on that side, which was an old lady who lived alone. Our yard had a 2 meters, about 6 feet 6 inches, tin fence with a very noisy gate as the only way in. We also had two dogs that were very audible in the presence of anything remotely threatening, or non-threatening, for that matter. On to the story. Everyone was asleep in their rooms, and my girlfriend at the time was also asleep in my bed with me. I'm unsure of the exact time, it would have been quite late, maybe 2 a.m. or later. I woke up to a deep, constant buzz-slash-hum sound, and my whole room was illuminated with white light. All the bedrooms have large windows facing out that are approximately 2 meters wide and maybe 1.2 meters tall. We had white roller blinds covering them, also, as mentioned, the house was raised so the bottom of the window would have been just under 2 meters above outside ground level. I was groggy from having only just woken, and it felt like a dream. I saw that my girlfriend was also awake and staring out the window across the room. We made a kind of WTF face at each other and looked towards the window a little longer. The light had no shape, as in, it wasn't as if it were from a torch being shown through. There was no shadow on the blind, it was like when you turn on a large TV to a white background in a dark room, only much brighter. The light never moved, it just filled the whole room. I don't recall feeling any strong feelings of fear. I just stared. I'm unsure why in hindsight, but despite being a curious person, I never felt the urge to get up and walk across the room to move the blind and look to see where the light or the sound came from. Looking back, I don't even remember when it stopped and went dark and quiet again. I just fell asleep. I woke up in the morning, and in all honesty, I remembered it like it was a dream. My brother, however, who would have been around 15 at the time, was a little freaked out. He asked me if I woke to a bright light filling my room. Surprised, I told him I did. At this point, I realized it was not a dream, and my girlfriend confirmed she saw it too. I said I heard a constant buzzing or humming, which she also confirmed. My brother, however, said he was terrified and lay in his bed, too afraid to look past the blind, and that he heard a sound that he described as the noise the Eldar buildings make in Dawn of War, to anyone who is not a gamer or familiar, it's like a weird echoed beeping sound. Dad was on night shift, so he was not home. Mom said she slept through the night and didn't know what we were talking about. Also, we never heard the gate open, and the dogs never barked once, very odd if anyone or anything had been moving around in the dark. On that side of the yard is the fence, and there are also medium-sized trees along it hanging over from the neighbor's side. Because of the lack of shadows cast and the way it filled the room, as well as my brother's room, I believe the light source had to have been from our side of the fence, or spooky, above the trees. My brother remembers the light and the sound and says he still remembers being scared. I'm no longer in contact with my ex, but years later, that night, I remember discussing how weird it was with her as well. Okay, there was this weird and creepy thing that happened when I was 8 or 9 years old. I was with a few friends, and we were playing like normal kids. Later, when it got dark, 
we went outside the house of one of my friends. It's a pretty wide area, your eye could catch a lot of buildings, you'll understand why I'm saying that, and it was really quiet. For some reason, one of my friends decided to tell a story just before we were ready to leave, which turned out completely different. So, my friend says, guys, I wanted to tell you something. At the gym over there, which was a couple buildings away, but we could see it from there. It was a public gym and didn't have a roof. There was a little girl who used to play but has now died. She always had a ball with her, was always saying, mom, I want to play, and was throwing the ball high in the sky. When we heard that, we got scared and instantly locked eyes at the gym. I shit you not, we all saw a effing ball going up and down like someone was throwing it up in the sky. It was going up and down in a perfect line and so high that no child or adult could throw it. And I remember, besides the sudden noise of the ball hitting the ground, which began right after the story ended, that we heard a kid laughing, like an echo that was coming from the gym. Immediately, we all started saying to each other, did you see that? We had been frozen for a few seconds, because it scared the living hell out of me and everyone else there. How could this be a damn coincidence, and right after he told the story. This could be in no way some sort of prank, we didn't have phones at that age to arrange this somehow, or kids playing at that particular time because the gym was closed and no one could get past the gate. Now, needless to say, we got the fuck away from there. Afterwards, though, I asked my friend who told the story, dude, was it a prank? And he said, no, no, it wasn't a prank. Four to five years later, I asked one of my friends that were there, and I said, dude, do you remember that time that we saw that ball at the gym? And he said, yes. He was creeped out when I mentioned it. Anyway, still to this very day, it creeps me out when I think of it. It took me years to figure out just how creepy my experience was. When I was a little girl, probably around 5 years old, like most kids my age, I lost a tooth and put it under my pillow. I went to sleep excited because I was at my grandparents' house, and my papa always put $1 under the pillow. This was the early 90s. In the middle of the night, I woke up to this blue light in the room. I looked up, and there was this bright ball of blue light right above me. It's almost like I was in a trance, I got out of bed staring at it and couldn't look away. I remember being slightly scared, but my mind was mostly blank. The light proceeded to leave the room, with me following. I went down the long hallway, through the front room, into the living room, and to the back door, where the light went through the door. I've never told anyone this part, but I started messing with the locked door, trying to get outside, all the while becoming more scared. Lucky for me, my blank Ming forgot the stick my papa always put in the door. The light eventually faded, and I came out of it. I was still pretty dazed at that point. I then decided I was thirsty, got a glass of water, and went to bed. When I woke up in the morning, I thought it was just a dream, until I saw the glass of water by my bed. I started freaking out until I discovered $2 under my bed instead of $1. My kid brain decided it must have been the tooth fairy who gave me an extra dollar. From that point on, I would tell everyone that I had seen the tooth fairy, all the while ignoring how scared I had been. Two things eventually showed me I had to stop with the delusion, it was the tooth fairy. One, my papa told me when I was a kid that he put two dollars under my pillow that night, but I just rationalized that he was messing with me. Two came not too long ago. I was telling my mom about it, and she got really quiet. She then proceeded to tell me that my older sister had seen the devil in our grandparents' house around the same time I was five, and my sister would have been seven. She said they all woke up to my sister screaming bloody murder, and she was inconsolable. She refused to ever go in that room again, even as an adult. The funny thing is, that room scared all of us kids, even without knowing that information. I know I saw that blue light and followed it, I just don't know what it was. This happened when I was 12 years old, so like 1990 to 1991. My brother, my mother, and I lived in a condo type structure. We were in between two other condos. It was late on a school night, maybe like 12 AM or so. I wake to hear the awful sounds of screaming and wall pounding coming from the left-sided neighbors. The wall between my bedroom and the neighbor's living room was also adjoined. When I say awful, I mean horrifying. Like this woman, she was being slammed into the wall, being beat with a blunt object, and screaming bloody murder. Me, being kind of young and also kind of half asleep, just try to ignore it for a bit. I'd say a good 10 minutes passes, and it's still going on, but less loud and less frequent. I get up to see if my mother and brother are hearing this. Nope, they are both soundly sleeping, so I just get back to bed because I have school in the morning and I really don't want to wake up my mom or brother, they also have to get up early. So I fall back asleep, only to be awakened by a knock at the door. At this point, I'm like, what the heck? 
I see police lights flashing outside my window on our street. I get up, and the cops are knocking hard and yelling, police. Open the door. My mom wakes up and goes to the door, and they ask to come in because they've got a call from our left side neighbors. They heard what sounded like screaming and some form of domestic abuse coming from the wall that attaches to their living room, my bedroom. I look at my mom, and I'm like, no friggin' way. I heard all of that too. But I was the only one awake to hear, so I didn't bother anyone. So, the police just had a look around and realized it was just a single mom with two kids, and everything was in order. They left, and nothing ever came of it. What's strange is that the neighbors had not been there long, and they gave off a creepy vibe. Weird looks and is not very friendly. They moved out a few months later. I have never forgotten about that, and I tell that story to all who'll listen. Friggin' weird, man. There is one theory that I've made for this. Maybe, just maybe, there's another time or dimension placed smack dab between our two walls, maybe in a different world or different time, someone was gruesomely murdered in that spot. And for some reason, it replays ever so often. Or there was a tear in the fabric of space and time, and I was exposed to the goings-on on the other side. I have no other explanation for it. Unless those weirdos were killing a woman and, for some strange reason, wanted to call the cops over to my place and investigate my family? I dunno. The house that my parents own has been in our family since I was a baby. First, my grandparents bought it, and then my parents bought it from them. The attic in this house is not a normal attic, it is huge and has a bedroom. When my grandparents owned the house, my twin uncles were 18 and 19 and decided to redo and finish it into a small apartment for themselves. When they were done, it had two bedrooms, a living room, and a small kitchen area, and the two of them moved up there. Within weeks, they started saying there was a little girl up there. My grandparents and mom were like, yeah, okay, lay off the weed a bit, but no one believed them. As time went by, one of my uncles got married and moved out. The other moved to the first floor apartment, it's a two-family apartment building, with his girlfriend, and they were expecting a baby. Around this time, my parents bought the house from my grandparents, and we moved into the second floor. As I got older, my uncle told me about how he believed there was a little girl in the attic. Knowing my uncle was like a dude, I laid off the weed and alcohol. One thing I did notice was that my bedroom was always freezing cold. My mom had heating people come in to look at the heat in my room and even had it replaced, but it never worked right. I had shelves that were screwed into the studs that fell off the walls, but not just fell straight down but like they were pulled. Fast forward a bit, and I'm 18, I just had my son, and my mom was nice enough to give me and my boyfriend, now husband, the upstairs apartment in the attic. Shit starts getting weird. My cat would not leave my son's side, he would sleep outside his bedroom door and follow us around when we were holding him, and that is not how this cat was, he was very independent. One night after we put our son to bed, my boyfriend and I were just hanging out talking in the living room when, as clear as day, we both heard a little girl crying and saying why me, why me, over and over again, to the point where my boyfriend ran downstairs, no one was home on either floor, ran around the house outside, and nothing. All while I'm upstairs and still hearing why I'm crying, but it's much quieter and then stops. We never heard it again while living there. We moved out about six months after that. My parents then decided to move to the first floor and rent out the second floor. New tenants move in. One day the new tenant is talking to my mom and goes, what's the deal with the little girl who's haunting upstairs? No one had ever said a word to her about it. I guess my uncle wasn't as high as we all thought he was. When I was in elementary school, I was staying at my grandparents' house with my brother and sister. My grandparents had this massive, king-sized bed in a guest room that was big enough for the three kids to share, which was great since they only had one guest bed. My grandparents wished us good night, turned off the lights, and went into their own room. My siblings fell asleep pretty quick, but I was awake for a while. The door to the bedroom had been left open, and I just kind of stared out into the black hall. As I did so, I saw what I can only describe as a ghost go by the open doorway. It was clearly a woman, but the rest of its features were amorphous. I remember that it was pink, kind of the same color as the first ghost in Ghostbusters, and didn't have any legs that I could see. It stopped when it got to midway and turned its head and stared right at me. I used to think when I was younger that if I ever saw a ghost, I would talk to it and solve the mystery about them. For some reason, that idea popped into my head as I lay there, and I thought to try, but I was so terrified that I couldn't get my mouth to form any words. I just lay there staring at it with wide eyes, my heart racing. Then, after a few seconds, it casually turned away and continued down the hallway. I haven't seen anything like that since then. That was maybe 20 years ago, and to this day I can't sleep in a room with the door open, 
and I'm afraid of sleeping in rooms that have openings going into other rooms or hallways. My wife teases me about it when I always insist that the door be shut at night, but I've never told her why I have to have it that way. Well, I'm fairly confident I could fill this thread with all the weird stuff I've experienced, but I'll just give a couple. First one, I used to live alone in a three-bed semi-detached house, UK, and one weekend afternoon in very late summer, September or so, I was upstairs decorating my bedroom. In this room in the corner was a built-in cupboard, kind of a wardrobe bricked in. Readers in the UK will be familiar with this. Anyhow, all I had in there were jackets and coats hanging on a rail and some shoes and boots on the floor. Anyway, I'm sitting on the floor, having painted most of the bedroom and just cutting it around the skirting board, when I hear three very loud knocks on this cupboard door. I put my brush down, go to the cupboard, and open it, everything is as normal. I close it and lock it, the small key permanently in the lock is essentially the handle, and continue painting. Minutes later, the same knocking again. This time I don't really pay too much attention, I'm fairly used to odd things happening. Then moments later, the knocking changes to hammering, at least 5 knocks. I again go to check the cupboard, and all is normal inside. So I lock it again, step away, and am met with a strong smell of smoke from pipe tobacco. I step out of the bedroom onto the landing, and from the bottom of the stairs I hear a child giggling, which turned to crying and saying something I couldn't quite make out, then an elderly woman cooing the child, there, there, darling and starting to sing a lullaby I don't recognize. Then both the noise and the smell of smoke just faded out. There was no explanation to this day, I didn't know the history of the house at all. The second thing is more UFO than paranormal. In the summer of 1987, a friend and I would drive down to Bournemouth beaches at the weekends, and one weekend we met two German girls on holiday with their parents. We hung out with them on the beach for the day and spent an evening or two with them. From memory, they were doing a UK family tour. On our second weekend at the beach with them and a nice evening out in a few pubs there, we were driving back home through the new forest. UK readers will know this is a massive wooded area that covers 571 square kilometers. For US readers, this is about the same as your average backyard. Anyhow, the main road from where we were to where we lived passed through the middle of the forest, and the roads are narrow enough that the branches of the trees on either side will touch some 30 feet in the air where trucks and buses stop hitting them, forming a tunnel of trees, I guess. We were driving at around 50 miles per hour in his car, listening to a tape cassette of AHA, classic 80s sounds. The time was around 11.30 p.m. Both of us were singing badly, no doubt, when suddenly the interior of the car lit up like daylight. Squinting out the windows, we see the entire car bathed in a pool of light, yet we couldn't see any light source as such. But we could see where the pool of light ended and could see the darkness of night about 5 feet away. My friend accelerated as fast as this little car would allow, but the light remained with us all the way up this tunneled road. I'll point out that I'd turned the music off by this point, and aside from the car engine noise, it was otherwise silent. We must have crested a hill at around 70 miles per hour with this light following us every inch of the way when suddenly the light just disappeared and we were left in darkness once again. We barely slowed down the rest of the way home and even managed to get pulled over for speeding once we'd reached town. The next day, during daylight, we drove back down this road to see if we could find any explanation. In the daytime, you can see the road is just two car widths, with no verge on either side, and as mentioned before, tree tops touch some 30 feet above. Whatever followed us, it wasn't a helicopter. Also, this stretch of road had no turnoffs, so no vehicle could follow us and then disappear by turning off. The only other salient point is that on the left side of the road is a large cemetery, which stretches for approximately 200 yards along the road. Neither story is too scary, but both are a bit weird. I'm in love but not verified through Reddit. We had a body dump in our area. A woman had been killed elsewhere. About two years later, we get a call one night from someone reporting a woman in a ditch. Rural, dirt back road around 2,300 hours. Myself and my shift partner take different routes in to see if anyone is leaving the area. I meet with complainants, and they give me the rundown. They're driving down the road, and out of the corner of their eye, they see a woman, clothed, laying in the ditch. It spooked them. So they went down the road before turning back around. They ask her if she's okay, and all she keeps saying is, tell them I'll be okay. The teenagers are kind of freaked out and call us. They give a brief description, and I send them on their way. I'm standing there talking to my shift partner, and our sergeant pulls up. When the original crime occurred, he was in our detective bureau. I give him the rundown and all, and he gets this look on his face. The description these kids gave was a 100% match for the dead woman down to the tattoo and the clothes that she was wearing. 
The spot these kids saw her was the same spot where we had the body dump. The weird part is that none of that information was ever made public. When he told me that the hair on the back of my neck and arm stood up, I decided it was a good time to leave. When I was 8 years old, I was in the back of my mom's car. She got out of the car and went to a local corner store to pick up an item, I can't remember what it was, she must have popped in for some milk or the newspaper. Something that shouldn't have taken her long, at any rate, but for my 8 year old kid brain, it felt like hours. There was an abandoned house at the end of the street that I started thinking about while looking out the window at nothing in particular. It was a sunny afternoon, and the street was lined with trees. I shouldn't have felt a sense of dread, but all of a sudden I did, and it was all consuming. I looked in the distance and saw a child about my age wearing a suit. He didn't look like he belonged to the area, and he definitely wasn't wearing any school uniforms, where I live, all schools have uniforms. Dark hair, dark eyes. He didn't blink, didn't look around him, and didn't smile, he just looked directly at me and kept walking at the same slow pace. I felt the dread building but couldn't move. He reached the car and started to put his hand on the car door when my mom raced out of the shop and yelled at him. It seemed like she knew him, I don't know why, they just seemed to stare at each other, and my mom told him to stay away from me. She got in the car and told me to never let strangers approach me, a pretty normal mom moment, but we never talked about that young boy again, never drove that route home, and never went to that corner shop again. On one of my first dates with this girl, I really liked. Things were going well. Drinking some beers, playing some darts, shooting the shit. We definitely have chemistry, and we start talking about how it'd be great if there was a way for people to tell if the person they were with was the right one. She jokingly says, tell you what? If I throw closer than your next throw, then we'll know we're meant to be. Now, I'm not good at darts, but she was plain awful. We had been playing toss for toss for like 20 minutes, and she hadn't once gotten closer to the bullseye than me. So I'm planning on intentionally throwing this dart wide to give her a good shot at getting closer than me, but as I said, I'm not good at darts. What was supposed to be my worst throw ended up being one of my best ever, and I hit the bullseye like 2 centimeters off center. I couldn't believe it, especially because this girl was pretty spiritual and all about interpreting signs, listening to the universe, etc. I was actually torn up about it because I knew how she would interpret it. She again jokingly says, I guess we're not meant to be, but then proceeds to walk up and toss a perfect bullseye. Literally a dead center throw. If I had had a million more tosses, I wouldn't have been able to get closer. It was weird. Five years later, we live together and have been going strong ever since. My wife is absolutely terrified of ghosts. She's never had an experience, but she said her mother was able to see spirits, etc. I dicked around with occult things as a teen and have been known to actively seek out spooky things and places. Anyway, we moved back to Australia from Japan, she's Japanese-born Korean, with our son. Now, the Sydney rental market is all kinds of fucked. With no references in Australia, we had zero luck getting a tenancy for months. My parents ended up pulling a few favors from family friends to get us one. Great. Little two-bedroom place. The only problem was that the previous tenant committed suicide on the property. Real estate didn't have to tell us, but they did. My wife did not like this. I tried to rationalize it for her, saying, he committed suicide, why would he want to hang around? Well, she found a Buddhist monk from somewhere to come and burn some incense, or rather, blah blah, banishing ritual. There were red beans and salt freaking everywhere. Well, a few nights after moving in, we're all asleep. I hear a noise, shuffling on the carpet outside our bedroom, coming from the bathroom into the hall, like someone dragging themselves along the floor. This wasn't unusual, our son is quite severely handicapped and, at this point, couldn't walk well, three years old. I sat up and squinted at the door. Someone's coming, I said, expecting the door to bump open clumsily and my goofy little boy to come bum shuffling in. Nope. The door opened. Light spilled into the room. I didn't have my glasses on, but there was definitely no one in the hallway. Effing ghosts, Jesus, I groaned. It's time to go, now. This is our house. The shuffling or dragging noise on the carpet went back into the bathroom, and I never heard it again. I checked on my son, he was fine, sleeping happily in his room. I've never told my wife about it, I didn't know how long we'd be staying there, and the longer I could keep her from worrying, the better. We've long since moved to QLD, but I've still not told her. I got off from working at a restaurant late one night and thought I would swing through my local 24-hour McDonald's for some food. I went to this McDonald's probably 3 to 4 times a week around the same time. This was probably 1.30 to 2 a.m. I pull up to the window, and I sit there waiting for about 2 minutes for someone to greet me, 
nothing. So I say, hello? And about three seconds later I just hear a really high-pitched scream coming from the speaker. Like a bloody murder scream. I was scared, but I was thinking maybe their system was broken, so I figured I could just pull up to the window and order. I pull up to the window, and nobody is there. The window is closed, and everything else looks normal, there's just not a person there. So I pull forward to the next window, and there is still nobody. I don't hear any movement, but all the lights were on and all the screens were on. I'm thinking they're all just in the back messing around with me or something. So I park and walk in, thinking the drive through was closed. The door is unlocked, and I walked in, and there was no one at the counter, no cooks in the back, no one. I didn't hear anyone talking or anything. There was just no one there. At this point, I had been there for 10 minutes since first pulling into the drive through The creepiest part is that as I walked out, to the same door I came in, I was looking at the door to see if maybe they were closed for the night or something, and there was no sign. And as I was standing outside of the door I just walked into, I felt the urge to pull the handle, and it was somehow locked. It still freaks me out. The scream was terrifying. I checked the news like crazy the next day and found nothing. This whole time, there was not another person in the drive through unusual for the busy area. I went back the next day and asked if they were closed the previous night, and they said no and seemed confused about why I would ask. At around the age of 9, I was home alone during the weekend. We were living in a house we were renting, and I loved it. But there's just one room in the basement that I can't stand being in for more than a minute. It was the only room that still has the landlord stuff in it. But every time my friends and I looked in, we felt like there was something watching us in there. Anyway, onto the story. I was sitting in the family office with my dog, playing on the computer, when there's a slight shrill voice that's nearly inaudible. Immediately, my dog perks up and starts walking to the hallway, and I decide to follow. The voice became louder once I was in the central area. For the next 15 seconds, I keep hearing some voice repeat hello Joe over and over again, Joe is my name. It was like it was coming from all around the house. I was weirded out, to say the least, and when it ended, I went to see if any of my friends were around to prank me or something. None of them were home at the time. I just decided it was my imagination and went back to playing some good old-fashioned Roblox. I've had my share of bad dreams as a kid, or thinking someone called my name here and there when alone, normal childhood fears, and such. Though some common things have never been an issue for me, such as sleepwalking, hallucinations, lucid dreaming, sleep paralysis, etc. But there was definitely one time that I saw something. And though I was no older than five, I know for a fact to this day in my heart that I was not asleep when I saw it. Basically, my mom and I used to sleep on a living room pull-out couch in my grandparents' house, who had recently removed the huge accordion doors leading to the kitchen. Well, laying down with the only light in the entire house coming from the TV in the living room, at the front of the house, I have a perfect view into said pitch-black kitchen. Watching TV, it starts to dim in certain spots, and it looks like these strange apparitions are fading in and out of the screen. Confused, I get a strange hunch to look in the kitchen, and in the far back hallway leading to the rooms in the back of the house, I feel like I see movement in the pitch blackness. Staring hard now, before my eyes, this thing literally appears at the entry of the living room where the doors would have been. It steps down into the living room, walking toward me, staring at me with its huge yellow cat eyes. Yes, this is where it gets weird. In my life, I saw this humanoid cat with large yellow eyes, like on the cover of the cat's musical wearing on its torso what almost looked like an article of clothing but glowing, if that makes sense. Not in a significant way, I just remember it standing out in the darkness. I mean, seriously, I didn't stay up to interview this thing. I saw it appear and take a step, walking toward me for just that split second, and I hid under the covers to see no more. Because it was so traumatizing, and really, I remember vividly from just that quick moment that there was no fur like a real cat, just soft black skin it looked like. I didn't see a tail, and in all honesty, it highly resembled the cat on the cover of Aerosmith's Nine Lives, in the best way I can describe it. To this day, I cannot look at that album cover. Long story short, I never saw it, or anything else, in person again, but it did follow me in my dreams for a few months or years afterwards. I now have an extensive history of sleeping with the sheets over my head or screaming randomly in my sleep due to this. One time, in my dream, it tried to show up, I could tell because all would be normal and bam this overwhelming sense of pure evil, and I basically told it to stop and go away, angrily, for the first time ever. I never saw it again after that. To this day, I know what I saw, a bad dream is a bad dream, but that night was so traumatic that it literally affected multiple aspects of my life. Of course, some say I was dreaming, 
and the recurring nightmares are just a result of the trauma. This is not true. The nightmares are the result of a memory, or even worse, maybe they weren't based on memory at all, but that thing was still actively pursuing me. F it. Have more stories about your grandparents' haunted house. I was in a band in Alabama at the time this happened, I now live in Ohio, where I'm originally from. We decided to record with our friend, who lived in Athens, Alabama. I'm pretty sure it was about an hour's drive from where most of us lived. We would record from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., then head home after hanging out a bit with the tech friend recording us. It's around 1.30 to 2 in the morning, and we are 10 minutes away from the highway exit, dropping the lead guitarist off. There's a normal amount of traffic on the highway and on lighted roads. Nothing too creepy. Yet. The highway bends to the right, and after the highway begins going straight again, two or three miles down the road, we see a huge illuminated vehicle in the sky. There's a nearby overpass, and near this overpass bridge is this huge aircraft flying like a helicopter. I literally think it's one of those giant military planes that transports helicopters for the army or something. I just think it's the angle from which we are seeing it that it appears to be hover flying like a helicopter would. Then we get closer and closer, until we are right under the thing. Unfortunately, I was in the first backseat, it was a 12-passenger van to carry us, amps, and gear, and my two friends driving slash shotgun were able to look straight up by leaning forward as we drove under it. I am not able to. They get practically hysterical as they look up, screaming, it's freaking a giant circle. And they described a couple light patterns underneath the thing, in a spiral shape, right as we pass under it, and soon after, the overpass. My friend driving wants to stop and try to follow it, but there's a semi right behind us not slowing down, and my guitarist friend unfortunately had to be home at a certain time as well. We quickly drop off our friend, and my other friend drives in the direction that we were pretty sure the UFO was headed in. Nothing. Completely gone. Of course, I realize there's our video camera in between the two front seats that we could have used to possibly film it. What is unsettling is that there was normal traffic flow on both sides of the highway. It was as if we were the only ones that saw it, and I feel like we were the only ones that saw it. The next day, I tried searching the internet. I knew which overpass it was over, it was Highway 296, if I recall, and tried to see if I found anyone else who saw the blatantly obvious huge craft in the sky, but couldn't find anything. Freaky. A house I lived in when I was 11 to 12 was definitely haunted, not that I actually believe such things. The father and stepmother had a Siamese cat named Maruka. She died. I was walking past my parents' room and saw Maruka sitting in the window like she normally does. I did a double take. I walked closer to be sure. Nope the F out of there. I lived in the basement of that house for a while. I felt his presence numerous times. Ran upstairs. One time, I said, fuck it. Let's see what this ghost can do. Stayed there. Tension kept mounting. I stayed there longer. The tension mounted even higher. I stayed there longer. The tension became so strong that I feared for my sanity and walked out. I was out front, playing in the tree. Friends suggest playing frisbee, TM. I get out of the tree and walk upstairs. Walk past the large walk-in closet that has the door open. Walk to my sister's room. Grab said frisbee. Walk to the stairs. Get an odd feeling, turn around, and look in the walk-in closet. A brown-skinned swami type dude, dressed entirely in white, is sitting in my closet with legs and arms crossed. I take a moment to try and convince myself to ask him what he is doing there, but in my mind, I see his mouth opening wide enough to swallow me whole, and I jump down the stairs in two jumps. There would have been only one jump, but the ceiling prevented a clean jump. Fast forward 35 years to Iraq, at the military fac. I see the guy who was in my closet getting breakfast and sitting down and eating. He has not aged a day. I was going to go sit with him and have a chat, but I figured he would freak out. I mean, there is no way he could have been the same guy, but he looked exactly the same. Another odd one. I was in a foster home. A foster parent friend was an astrologer. OMG, people believe in that crap? Well, she asks for a few pieces of information and comes back two weeks later. He handed me a list of things I like and prefer. It was about 70% correct. Not bad for guesswork, but two items on that list freaked me out a bit. The favorite color thing could have been luck, but guessing the number? Not possible. She had the right number. She took me aside and said she had a special vision about me. I would be unlucky in love until I met a woman who lived on an island halfway around the world at Ajax. I married a woman from an island halfway around the world at Ajax. I have numerous more, but these should get you started. I do not believe in the supernatural. 